This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon. The time being 4.45, I'd like to call the meeting of July 15th, 2021 to order. Before we get started, if you're joining us virtually, please make, uh, please mute your microphone during the meeting unless you want to speak. Otherwise, background noise will interfere with the meeting. First up, Pledge of Allegiance, please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mic's on. Yes, please make sure your microphones are on and you speak into the microphone so that they are recorded for the minutes. Gail will be gratefully appreciative of that. Thank you. Let's see, what do we got next? Oh, Finance IT Director, Tim Pearson, Budget and Expense Review. Well, oh, I should actually sign this this week. Oh, what is it? 29 minutes. Oh, is that the old one? I read that one too. There you go, Scott. Hello. So uh, in front of you, you should have my report uh, along with uh, an updated uh, expense and revenue uh, worksheet at the end. And although I only have a half an hour tonight, I'm happy to answer any questions um, if you give me a call or send me an email. But uh, the purpose, my main purpose for coming to the board tonight is to review not only where we are half year to kind of a 30,000 foot view, but also some of the budget issues we're gonna be facing through the end of the year. And then also to get your agreement on the schedule for the budget and some budget goals. So first and foremost, for the 2022 budget, I'm sure you're all aware of uh, recent headlines regarding the inflationary pressures, or if you've looked at any used cars lately, you've probably seen the prices of some of these things. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of uh, chatter out there about whether this is short-lived or if this is you know, part of a longer-term cycle, but the result of it is that uh, we were looking at a 5.4% increase year over year of inflation. And if you take out energy and food out of that, and these are consumer prices, if you take out energy and food, it was a 4.5% increase. So no matter how you look at it, it was a pretty significant uh, increase. And I think most people felt that and saw that. And the, the result is that in the past, the Federal Reserve has generally used um, the overnight rate, uh, borrowing rate between banks to, uh, to moderate the money supply. So when there's too much money out there and there's too much flow of money uh, and prices start to increase, people have more money to spend, there's more demand for goods, that's when uh, they can use their overnight rate to restrict that. And by increasing the rate, it also tamps down um, inflation. The issue with that is then you have other types of increases in costs and uh, in particular interest rates, which affects a whole myriad of things. So in any, in any event, uh, it's pretty clear that, that we're looking at inflationary pressures. Plus, if you're to look at the labor market for municipalities, um, looking at newhampshiremunicipal.org, uh, the openings that are out there, um, the, the number of retirements, you know, that sort of thing, there's really a shortage of qualified um, municipal employees in certain areas. And that doesn't bode well for most employers. Um, you know, there are times when they're plentiful, there are times when it's tight, and I think it's on the tighter side of things. And I think we can see that through, um, you know, some of the hiring that we've been looking to do in terms of uh, officers, certified officers, things of that sort. So, uh, and then lastly, the, you know, the news of the pandemic, the, the uncertainty surrounding uh, the Delta variant and, and just other things that are out there, the unknowns, um, the increase in some infection rates in some areas of the country. Uh, it's still a concern. It's still something that's good, that could impact economic activity. But in a, at a local environment, um, the risk factors that I see, uh, there's, there's 
kind of a twofold thing here. So there's a lot of federal uh, attention and money uh, being put towards uh, counteracting the pandemic. And, and uh, you know that Jeannie and I are working on the ARPA funds, the application for those funds that will hopefully eventually come this year and then also another payment next year. But, uh, but for us, there were priorities that we didn't get to uh, so far in 21. As you know, we spent a lot of time um, dealing with personnel issues uh, in the budget. So there was a, quite a budget savings in some areas. And then also um, you know, the economic development, the charrette that was pushed out into September. So I think, you know, as I look at it, there are uh, these two components are really our local risk factors. So the, the investments in police equipment and personnel uh, there are open positions now, which I'll go through a little bit later. Uh, we also um, have heard from Chief Pizer the issues with the uh, the vehicles, which um, uh, Director Duval has also pointed out before, and uh, and that's become uh, more of an urgent issue to address. So, in addition to that, uh, I'm very concerned that with the um, you know, just as much as the macroeconomic factors, the risk factors, we also, I think, in my term here, I've never seen an opportunity uh, to really push on economic development, community development, as we have now. And the reasons for that are, are several. First of all, the interest rates are still low. There's a lot of investment being made in real estate and real estate investors and people wanting to spruce things up and beautify. And plus, we have um, a, a resource here that we've never had um, that is capable of seeing this through to fruition and taking ideas and getting the community involved and taking it through to an action plan where we can actually see real changes made in the Tilton downtown. So, um, and that's, that's the, uh, you know, our town administrator's time. She's got the best Rolodex in the state, and and if anybody is ever going to do it here, it's going to be Jeannie. And what really worries me is that the monies that we've set aside first two years ago that we encumbered and pushed into last year, and then last year into this year, um, and now pushing out the charrette, um, it's, I think it's really, uh, and this is more of an issue that the board would have to look at in terms of priorities, but um, if if uh, our town administrator isn't afforded the time, uh, it really won't make any difference whether we have budget associated with these activities because uh, absent of the time and resource that she's going to put into it personally in her activities here, uh, it's just probably going to be kicked down to another year, to another year. And uh, and it would be a shame that if interest rates during that time weren't in a, you know as favorable as they are today or investors weren't as as active or interested in developing. So uh, so I feel like, you know, we're we're at a point, and this is still budget related, uh, because um, how you um, prioritize her time, if you will, is a budget item. And how you see the investment in the town. And this is just one of the items, one of the other items that I thought was um, a risk factor for us, uh, and that could push into 22. So what I'd like to propose is, uh, and I have spoken to the department heads already, we are starting work on the departmental budgets. Uh, so my proposal would be July and August, the department heads work on their budgets, uh, flush out everything. And then September 9th, I would make a presentation of the overall draft budget to the board. And then uh, from that point forward through the end of October, uh, the selectmen would meet with the department heads. And then in November, would be the, um, at some point, the budget presentation to the budget committee. So hopefully by Thanksgiving, but certainly by the end of the month. And then that gives them enough time um, during that period to, you know, work on the budget uh, prior to any public hearings in February. Have you worked on that? Have you presented that with Billy at all or just us? Uh, no, uh, just uh, just with the board. Um, their next meeting is on uh, September 8th. And uh, 
uh, they they're working right now towards you know collecting information on the outside agencies yeah. and so uh, I think that uh, you know they might want to see things earlier than than Thanksgiving but uh, we can always adjust but that's in in terms of sort of I think a, a reasonable schedule I think this is uh, this is fairly close it might take some tweaking uh, further on. So uh, if without objection, I'll just proceed forward with that schedule unless, uh, okay, Absolutely. all right, great. Yeah. And then uh, what I'd like you to consider are some budget goals and those don't have to be decided now, um, but maybe at your next meeting, I'd like some time to uh, talk to you more about it. So uh, looking at what we're gonna be facing this next year, probably the, the two big things are that we're gonna to start to see some of the debt come online. It's not the full payment, but uh, the 2022 budget will be taking on additional principal. And uh, that's about 2.6% increase right there, just in that one debt payment uh, over our 2021 budget. And then add to that the fact that we're gonna be uh, having a new sanitation contract. And I know that uh, probably no matter which company we end up with, uh, we're probably going to have to be paying the costs of recycling disposal, the market costs. And I've already been told by Pinard that uh, right now we have a contract where our max out-of-pocket cost is $50 a ton, and they've paid anywhere from $75 to, I think, $125 a ton to dispose of recycling. So, um, so our costs are going to increase there. And then that's not really allowing much extra money for any sort of inflationary issues we're gonna be facing. Um, one of the items further down in my report uh, deals with uh, gas prices, natural gas. So right now we could lock in a 48 month contract, but it's at a 7% higher rate than, than where we are now. So you know these are, these are things that we're gonna to have to be looking at, but 5% increase uh, really is almost a flat increase outside of the debt payment and probably um, contract increases, you know, or, or thereabouts. Uh, the other items here, um, merit recommendation. So this past year, we were at a 2% increase. Uh, I think it's really incumbent upon the board to consider those consumer price uh, inflationary pressures, the 4.5 to 5. 4% uh, increases when you consider some of the employees and and in order to provide for an adequate pool so that not everyone is necessarily getting a 3% increase. And as the board may recall, there have been many years where not the entire merit amount allocated was not uh, distributed. So, uh, and it's all based on performance, but you have to start with a pool. So, um, so my recommendation was either three to three and a half percent. And Gina and I discussed this. And um, so th these are just some ideas for the board, but uh, we would like to get that uh, nailed down sometime soon so that as we're going through the, um, the personnel costs and all those things that we can, we have a number that we can rely on. Uh, in addition, there are a number of open positions. So right now there are two open positions in public works. Uh, and three open positions in the police department. So the way that was calculated was if you look at our roster in January of 21 and you look at it now, those are there are three positions open. There was $85,000 taken out of the budget at town meeting, if you recall, out of the officer's wages line. And um, that, that was a monetary amount, not necessarily a position. Uh, and it, it doesn't really equate to a position, but um, but in any event, looking at the budget for next year, the assumption I'm making at this point is that we would be filling those three open positions and, and in public works, the two open positions there. In addition, uh, as we talked about the, the tight municipal environment and particularly certified officers, that it might make sense considering the fact that uh, there's really only one person eligible for the um, the non-CBA merit in the police department uh, to look at maybe allocating some of those funds for uh, possibly a signing bonus or something to help entice um, uh, certified officers uh, to join the town. 
So that's something we can talk more about later. Um, in the first half review, uh, clearly if you've looked at the numbers, we are significantly under budget as compared to where we normally are. And that's primarily due to the, uh, the open positions and uh, the personnel changes in the police department. So um, as you know, we had a contract uh, attorney prosecutor uh, that was at a higher figure than what we were paying our employee prior to that, but uh, those were charged to officer's wages. The administrative director, who was not a certified officer, uh, the, the first uh, administrative director, was also charged to officer's wages because he wasn't the chief of police. So when you look at the chief of police line, that was our former chief and uh, the remaining uh, payout to the former chief, and then the current chief will be paid out of that line as well. We're looking at, uh, I've estimated somewhere around 190 uh, to maybe even as much as 220,000 uh, savings by the end of the year. And a lot of that has to do with what kind of medical plans new employees come in on. So right now I feel pretty comfortable we're looking at at least $190,000 savings through the end of the year in the operating budget. The, and just to give you an example, so uh, if you consider all the open positions filled right now at the rate that they were originally filled in January, we'd be looking at about a $2,581 weekly savings. So our run rate is, is pretty significantly down on a weekly basis. That's in the PD alone. This is just the police department. If you add in those three open positions right now, we're actually, our run rate is about 70 $294 less than it was in January on a weekly basis. So uh, so that should give you some comfort in understanding that, uh, that we are going to have a pretty significant um, uh, budget savings by the end of the year, even ramping up. Uh, in addition, on the, the back of this page, I've outlined some additional things. So Chief Pizer has really looked into um, everything that we have here, as you know, and she's investigating the software we have, looking at the technology, um, looking at things that maybe we should have implemented or um, maybe we don't need. So really going through and, and trying to determine uh, what's the right fit uh, for this department. The fleet uh, in particular uh, is her number one priority. And right now, uh, in order to replace about three vehicles, we have three sources of revenue that we can really be looking at. One is uh, any kind of federal grant through this ARPA money. Another is in the uh, operating budget savings. And then the third is in the detail fund. So the detail fund right now, and in your payables, your accounts payable, uh, we're making the last payment on the 18A cruiser. So uh, with the with that payment made, I think there was a balance in the detail fund of about thirty two thousand eight hundred and twenty two dollars, and that uh, that is available then for you know to go towards any purchase and and if the detail money keeps coming in, that will obviously grow. But uh, between those three sources of revenue, I think it's entirely possible to uh, to acquire three vehicles. And uh, for that matter, uh, if, if we run into any sort of restrictions on grant money, um, we could always have a warrant article for a vehicle as well at town meeting. But, uh, but I think three vehicles within the next 12 months is, uh, is pretty much the minimum that uh, she's gonna be looking for. 18A is the only vehicle that we owed money on, right? That's right, yep. So we, we, uh, we're free and clear on all the vehicles. And her goal also would be not to retain the Crown Vicks, but to uh, to have those replaced so that at, at details, uh, we have cars that could respond if necessary, if there were an emergency. So, which, which is a change in philosophy from the former chief. So, uh, uh, she's also looking at a change in the uh, manufacture of the vehicles as well, so. Uh, but in any case, um, that be presented to us very soon, because uh, as you know, the uh, the timeline to acquire a vehicle can be pretty significant from the time you order it to the time 
you actually get it unless somebody's got a a uh, police package uh, Tahoe or something sitting on a lot and that's not usually the case they're usually ordered um, there's a lot of other uh, components to them too and maybe, well, Tim, maybe we'll Kevin would know the availability of these vehicles two hands up in the air oh so John had his Tim, um, we're talking about replacing the Crown Vics and putting some of the other cars on. Um, we also have a Crown Vic as a town car that, I mean, I drove that thing four or five years ago. It was quite the ride to um, go to Portsmouth. I will drive it again. <laughs> yeah, I, so I, I think, you know, we really need to, for safety reasons and replace comfort that. reasons, replace that. Well, and, and really the, um, I think the, the option there is um, to determine, um, you know, what's reimbursable mileage expense and just uh, maybe it doesn't make sense to have a vehicle there or if the, um, the building inspector requires a vehicle, um, maybe, maybe there's a vehicle that will be coming offline at Public Works, a pickup truck or something and within the next, you know, years. That maybe that could be repurposed uh, when he gets his brand new vehicles <laughs> okay so uh i just wanted to mention that lieutenant gilman has done some pretty extensive research already on um, replacement vehicles so i would expect you'd see that information sooner than later yeah i know chief pizer uh wants to uh, get this plan in front of you very soon um, because time is really of the essence. I'll just throw it out there because I believe the town of Northfield recently had to replace a vehicle on short notice, and I believe they it was a Chevy. Again, I don't know what you're what the chief is looking at, but Tahoe, uh, Tahoe is a Chevy. Yeah. So, but they went to a dealership in Massachusetts and they were able to get the police package right away. Oh, good. So, yeah, we. Uh, We'd, we'd had one time when we purchased a vehicle that there was a police interceptor on a lot, uh, but that usually wasn't the one time. One time. That wasn't one time. usually the, uh, the yeah. norm. But in any event, um, and then, uh, uh, you know, as, as no bad news improves with age here, um, uh, item C. So in running the, uh, the April reports, I noticed that um, there was something that looked a little off to me in the uh, percent year to date for the uh, cruise wages in public works. And then in June, when I was running the June reports, again, it looked uh, even more out of place. And it turned out that in the uh, budget preparation, I had made an error in uh, the uh, the overall wages uh, worksheet that, uh, that uh, consolidates into the cruise wages. Uh, not for any of the benefits or anything else, but just in a salary line. So there was a thirty-six thousand dollar error, and um, short that amount. Short that amount. That's correct. Yeah. However, uh, there are two things that uh, that have occurred that are going to make up the majority of that before the end of the year, and we might actually be pretty close to um, to dealing with that. But one of which is uh, the amount of time spent on the PD here working on the gravel parking lot and also all the building of the desks and moving of equipment. All that was charged to the, uh, the building fund uh, for the labor um, as it should be. And between that and then also the personnel changes uh, at the um, public works garage that, um, that that's gonna account for better than half and might even be about three quarters uh, by the time we get to the end of the year. So I don't think we're, we're uh, I don't think there's a cause for concern at this point, but you know, certainly keep an eye on it. From an overall town budget, uh, we're not gonna be anywhere near uh, overexpending our budget uh, short of some uh, catastrophe that we have to uh, spend money on. No, good question. So this is as of uh, June, it's at the end of June and what percentage of the year? Is it at 50%? Half, okay. Half, yep. As we're on a calendar basis. So the, um, um, and uh, also, uh, just so that you know, anytime uh, I make an error, uh, I always make sure that I put something in place so that I can trap that in the future and I don't make that same mistake. And I think uh, not, not to um, make an excuse for this, but there was a lot going on at the time of the budget. Uh, development 
and somehow I missed that and I didn't catch it in the uh, the double checking of it, which I normally do. So, and I honestly just don't remember what was going on. In 10 years I've been working with you, this is the first time I've seen something like this. Yeah. I, oh, so you're not a I think it's been longer, guy. longer than that even. Yeah, uh, I was thinking about guy. it too. I thought I can't remember a time when I've, I ever made a mistake like that. Uh, but the other thing I want to mention, whether it's me or uh, my <laughs> replacement someday, that uh, no, that th it's really important because you never want to punish. I mean, you can take it out on them elsewhere, but you never want to publicly um, berate a finance person for an error like that because you want them to come forward to you and you know share because everyone's going to make mistakes. It's just. Are they going to tell you the mistake they made, or are they going to bury it? So, uh, so it's just good governance, and um, you know. So, just just as a FYI, uh, although I'm not planning on going anywhere anytime soon. You know, but, Tim, uh, I, I think nobody can beat you up more than yourself. So you're good. Yeah, I'll tell you, I I, uh, I lost some sleep over that. I I must have looked at that a hundred times when I found it. And I I just couldn't believe it. Um, but in any event, it is what it is. So the other items here, just very quickly, uh, I'm sure I'm about out of time. The utility contracts are expiring. Um, the gas is expiring in um, January and electricity is expiring uh, this fall. I believe it's uh, the end of September or October. I have to double check. But a uh, question for the board is how would you like to proceed? Would you like me to uh, schedule in the um, the energy brokers? They can tell you about the marketplace. They can tell you about what services they offer. Uh, these are generally the way most municipalities uh, go is to uh, work with a broker. In the past, we've also uh, worked through Lakes Region Planning Commission when they've um, consolidated a bunch of towns together to get better buying power. The only difficulty with that is that uh, there, uh, and, and it, it's a great idea, but uh, the way it was implemented, uh, there was such a delay between the uh, preliminary pricing and the final pricing uh, that you couldn't really take advantage of market fluctuations and lock in when you really wanted to. You were kind of bound by their schedule. And also there was a, a fee uh, for their consultant that was managing the process. So my recommendation would be to use one of the, uh, there, and there are a lot of brokers out there. We've used a, a very good one out of Meredith for many years um, that the school district has also used. Um, and uh, there are other people as well. So I can, I can schedule some people to come in um, and work with Jeannie to, you know, to get in front of if you like. I say uh, go with your recommendation. It'll bring the people in. Okay. Whatever you whatever you Start suggest. Start the process. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Yep. yep. No, that's fine. Um, and then uh, just some other things very quickly. Uh, we're behind on the audit, and uh, this is this is the uh, the metaphorical pig in the python. As you know, I've been I've had to put some things off um, over this last year. Everything is sort of pushed out a month or two, and uh, it's no different for the audit. So I'm hopeful that we can be doing the field work in August and and have the report by October tax rate setting time. And I do think that's um, doable. The TAN, um, we have typically repaid the TAN uh, because it's been treated like a line of credit borrowing. This year, uh, there was a, a unique situation with um, the IRS and uh, going through the tax exempt uh, borrowing process for our bond for the building and uh, using our um, our bond council, the uh, the terms of this TAN are somewhat different so that uh, we are prohibited from paying it off and reopening it again. Uh, it's a one shot deal and that's because of the tax exempt nature of it. So we could either pay it off and then go through the process of doing a non-tax exempt borrowing, uh, or we can just carry it forward, which uh, is my recommendation. I believe we have the budget for it, but I'm gonna spend a little more time looking at that and I'll be back in touch with you. But I did wanna bring that to your attention. Uh, I fully intend next year to do uh, the line of credit uh, borrowing again, but uh, there are some very specific uh, and very arcane in my view, uh, IRS regulations and um, we don't want to be violating um, uh, what 
what could undo our um, bond borrowing uh, for the building. Uh, lastly, the uh, FEMA reimbursement. Um, so back in April, we had uh, we had submitted for 81,000, or actually since April, $81,157, which was made up of uh, overtime for the police department and also the all the equipment that is in this room here and in the IT room that that runs this. So about $56,617. Uh, there there was an expectation early on that we were going to see the approval and um, money for this. Uh, however, uh, as it turns out, the state has run into a snag with uh, the federal government over the eligibility of some overtime, and that hasn't been resolved. So I requested of our um, Homeland Security rep uh, just recently that they decouple that for us and you know try to get the payment for the EOC. AV equipment, uh, which is for remote communications. And uh, if you recall, part of that is what we wanted to apply to the town hall uh, to do, uh, not maybe to this extent, but uh, to do something similar where we would have a, a very effective and reliable AV system uh, that we could do the same type of uh, broadcast from there. And if the board so you know was inclined, you could be meeting back over at the second hall, second uh, uh, floor of town hall. And then uh, I've already mentioned the ARPA, so uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So bottom line is we're under budget. Uh, there's a lot of decisions that have to be made between now and the end of the year, um, personnel-wise, uh, filling positions vehicles, and then uh, any other items, uh, I think that we really need to, the board really needs to seriously consider uh, supporting Chief Pizer on as, as she uncovers things that um, that might need to be replaced or, um, or addressed in the PD. So other than that, that's all I have for you. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, in the last 48 months, how much have energy costs fluctuated? Uh, um, so, uh, that's a good question. Um, they've been up some, we, we had a very favorable gas contract, uh, the contract before our current one, we're paying right now 60 cents a therm. Uh, we're looking at 64.2 cents a therm, um, or 0.642 cents a therm, I should say, um, in a four year agreement. Uh, we've had it as low as 5.1, I think, at one point, and that was an 18-month term. So, uh, so it's up over what we've had, but but we also had a, an incredible contract there for a while that no nobody else was really even close to. Um, the uh, on electricity uh, hasn't been quite as good, um, and I would say that that's that also has been on the rise, um, not. Not nearly as uh, as much. Seven percent. Um, I and honestly I don't to know. To lock in at seven percent. Well, the seven percent uh, is is looking at a four year term mm -hmm. on gas versus what we currently have. Mm -hmm. So um, I think over the course of four years, I think that's a that's pretty good. But I think we can also do better because generally speaking, when they publish a rate, you can negotiate better uh, than that rate, and you just gotta work it. Uh, but it can be done. And it's, I mean, it's not a huge difference, but where it's 0.642, we might get 0.638 or 0.635 um, if we lock in today kind of thing. So it it might require down the road um, uh, as, you, as you listen to people and maybe select a broker, maybe at that point uh, you would give me um, permission to negotiate it from that point forward uh, to try to lock in something if it's, you know, in between your meeting schedule or something of that sort, or not to exceed a certain rate, um, which we've done those things in the past. So hopefully that answers your question. It does. I have a question. Um, and it, because in my time here, we've never had to purchase a vehicle, but buying three, this seems awfully steep. Is there a possibility that with the savings that we're experiencing that we can put some of that savings towards a new vehicle in 2021? 
Well, absolutely. And, uh, and that's what I was getting at, that between between our detail fund, the budget savings, and um, and the federal monies, uh, we could certainly have orders outstanding, which would be encumbering the money from 21 budgets, so we wouldn't have to raise and appropriate the money in 2022. Uh, maybe it's, one, right? Well, certainly, certainly one, uh, maybe two, uh, in 2021. Um, no, no, I mean in 2022 uh, for the budget. One car for the budget, probably. Uh, two cards this year. Uh, it's it's possible, uh, depending upon the eligibility of some of these monies, it's possible we could uh, be in a position to order three this year. That's a possibility. Uh, the the, the okay. difficulty you're going to run into next year is that that 5%, if, if you decide you want to put a cap or try to have a, a, a goal, I should say, because, you know, a budget is simply a plan. I mean, it, it's not set in concrete. You know, we don't know what's going to happen later on in the year, uh, but it, it's it's our guide uh, through the year, and it's what we're hoping, you know, will happen or better. So, but if we add a vehicle to that, we're going to be looking at probably a 6.5% increase in the operating budget, uh, unless it's set aside as a Warren article. But even still, you're going to be looking at a tax uh, tax increase that's going to be more significant than, say, taking full advantage of uh, the monies that that we might have available to us now. So, uh, and the only reason I hedge on that is that uh, there's um, not knowing all the requirements and restrictions on the ARPA funds. Uh, Jeannie's more up on that right now, but we're going to be meeting and going through it. Uh, and it's really critical that we get it right because if if you miss the application deadline for the first for the first year, you're automatically excluded from any payment in the second year. So, uh, and this is coming up soon in, in August. I think it's August 10th or uh, 18th. Yeah. So, uh, so we got some work to do there, but um, in any event, uh, so it is possible that there could be uh, the ability to do that. The, the criticism from the public in the past has been, oh, if you buy three cars all at once, then, you know, eight years from now, you're going to have to, we're going to have to swallow another three cars. Well, uh, by the same token, um, you know, you're not buying a car then, you know, we didn't buy a car last year. We didn't buy a car the year before that. And primarily because uh, the chief, the former chief was reluctant to uh, put that burden on the public when we were asking to buy land and, and engineering costs. And then the year after that, get the, the building approved. And so, um, so there were several years where people didn't have to shoulder that uh, that cost, but uh, now it's it's come to a point where it's it's more critical nature and and as I said, I believe in as far as I know that it's uh, Chief Pizer's uh, primary um, priority in terms of uh, financial priorities, uh, you know, that she's looking at for the assets of the PD. That that whole three years from now, we're going to have the same issue needs to be considered somewhere in this equation. Because it's true. My concern would be in we can. I'm sure there's going to be a whole presentation. Is going from one type of car to another, so that means the the upfitting of everything needs to be new. Well, well, and uh, the uh, the newest Ford Interceptor uh, faces a lot of the same issues because um, the cage, from if I remember correctly, and maybe Kevin correct me, but uh, the cage uh, would have had to have been new. Um, the uh, Some of the technology that we have in these vehicles, the patrol PC is, um, is transferable uh, to a new vehicle. It just requires a, a mount for that vehicle. Um, outside of that, you're looking at light bars and the, all the lights and that sort of thing, which um, as you know, we've been through We've been through the the whole gambit of uh, from you know the top shelf to the bottom shelf of these these things and and standardizing on a vehicle uh, is important you know that that uh, if you know that body style is going to last a while so that you can you know move those things from one to the other but the other thing that I would look at again is um, uh, we have been very successful in financing some of these vehicles in the past 
And, uh, but there are specific uh, rules regarding uh, leasing now that, um, that are in place now that weren't uh, when we were doing it uh, earlier. And, and also we were pushing the envelope a little bit in terms of making the payments from uh, the detail fund directly. But we had a plan, and uh, if, if any of you recall the, the color chart, uh, it was basically a vehicle per year with a three-year uh, payment, um, payments over three years for the cars. And, and what I'm proud of is that we've spent very, very little interest in the acquisition of those prior cars, but, um, but the result is just the same. We're still at a place where we need to replace cars, and, and it's time to get rid of the Crown Vicks. And a whole lot less repair and maintenance because of highway taking over. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and I think we're spoiled in, in some respects because uh, Kevin is just in, just incredibly talented and very cost conscious. And I, I have to say there is not a department head, save myself maybe, that is as interested in budget savings and saving the town money and uh, and I, I just can't say enough good things about Kevin. Um, he he is someone that really looks at it almost as his own business. And and uh, I, for one, as a taxpayer and a finance director, I just uh, very much appreciate that that attitude and uh, and his attention to detail. And um, so I I think uh, I've probably run over at this point. No, you, you have three minutes. But Jeannie had a question too. Um, not so much a question, but I guess a statement. statement, maybe. I don't know if the board has ever considered um, setting up a capital reserve fund or an ETF that you would every year set aside money um, towards a vehicle so that you're not hit, um, you know, all at once that you're building up that reserve fund. Um, I know it's something we do over in Meredith for. At at one point. Well, so it's and, something to consider. Yeah, and, and we uh, Chief Pizer and I had talked about that uh, for um, uh, making it uh, generic enough so there could be, uh, you know, if it was radios that, that needed to be replaced or a vehicle that it, it could be um, used where the greatest need was. Uh, the um, We do have, of course, the revolving detail fund, and uh, perhaps it's possible to make... Um, um, I have to look at whether it's it's feasible to have any other uh, revenue uh, deposited into that. Uh, that may be a possibility. Um, but in any event, John, so um, you might have a little bit of information on SAU, how that's going to affect our budget coming up, and did they refund us any money or? Uh, the the last I I don't know any update other than. Um, uh, there was a pretty significant um, budget savings at the, uh, the school. Uh, the the last, uh, I think we were looking at, uh, for Tilton, we're looking at a reduction um, in the rate, but it's still, still uh, very early. I mean, it, it was looking that direction, but uh, their budget savings were pretty significant. Um, there are also changes in sc the school funding formula. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm just not really well prepared to talk about that tonight, but- okay. um, You check into that. Yeah. When does the formula come up? Was that just? Uh, let's see, 19, so I guess it would be 24, I think is the next, I think that's the next um, five year cycle for the formula committee. All right. All right. Great. You Thank have you used much. up all of your time. That's Thanks, good. Tim. Thank You're you, welcome. Tim. You're welcome. Yeah, 5.30. DPW Director Duvall. You're next up. Department update. Can't wait. That's what it says. If I might interject, uh, just want to say that I think uh, Tim's presentation was terrific. It was. It was very informative. Absolutely outstanding Thank presentation. You. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, that was it. I just wanted to add that. A hard yeah. act to follow now. It is so, a hard act. Yeah, yeah especially <laughs> after the day I've had. Well, he kind of 
built well, you up oh. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was very appreciative of yep. his kind words. Yes, you gave, um, you gave us color pictures. Yeah, <laughs> bring do bring donuts tomorrow. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so first off, the department is doing good. We're pushing forward. I I know we're shorthanded, but it just means that we're prioritizing and just picking away at you know the the lesser important projects like roadside clearing and we're focusing on the more important ones like riverfront park and uh issues like that potholes and safety issues um the crew's um spirits seem to be up they uh they're still working hard and and, and giving 100 100 percent so uh, very proud of them and, and the work that they're they are doing even though they are shorthanded um other than that, we're just pushing forward. I'm put an ad out. We have put out put an ad out to replace the last person that left, retired. Um, haven't received any uh, applicants yet. Uh, we're still waiting for the background check for the okay. potential new hire that we do have. As soon as we get that back and everything is clear, then we'll proceed with. Um, with him, which is nice. It should be only be a couple of weeks, um, which actually kind of ties in with my project that I wanted to talk to you tonight about. Uh, I hope that everyone got their information early and the uh, video that I had showed or that I had forwarded to you. So in my search of, I'm constantly looking for new or, or different ways of, of getting projects completed, uh, more cost-effective ways to get job jobs completed. Um, in my search, I did uh, discover this Stone Strong uh, product that uh, looks like it's pretty perfect for the for the application that we need it for on on, P on um, Academy Street. Um, does anyone have any questions on the retaining wall system that I'm presenting? John? Yeah, I guess, um, you know, I, I watched the video. It was mm -hmm. really informative, and, and I like to think it sounds like something that maybe you yes. guys can do it. Yes, well, we, can, we could do it in-house. Um, each block is 24 square feet, 6,000 pounds. So it's the largest gravity-based retaining wall system in production. Um, a local company has it right in stock, Gilbert Block in Guilford, Laconia. Uh, they, it, it incorporates drainage along with the block, the retaining wall construction. So each layer of, each row of retaining wall has its own channel for drainage. So the, the wall is, um, the blocks are placed the drainage pipe is placed and then it's surrounded by three quarter stone. So those, once it's all put together, the drainage goes all the way to the bottom and then continues out. The, the upside to this system is as long as the end of the drain pipe is daylighted, meaning it's out to atmosphere and we have access, it can be put on a regular routine maintenance, meaning we could have a company come in and run a, a drain cleaner up the line, clear out all the sediment. So it, it's something that we can continue to maintain instead of just building it and forgetting about it. The other thing that I wanted to mention about this wall is that they use a, a 5,000 PSI concrete, which has a 100-year life cycle. So that was very enticing to me, something that I can build and know that it's going to be here for a long time. Um, the... The other positive side to this type of wall is the top block is actually recessed so that you can use uh, pavement right to the edge. So there's no, um, there's no void, there's no uh, 12 or 18 inches of concrete wall where you're sacrificing road width. It goes right to the edge, which is about six inches. Now the the construction strength of this type of wall is the road is built on top of the block, not beside the block, to where you have a running load 
that's constantly vibrating and pushing, potentially pushing the blocks out. The, the road is actually built on top of the blocks. So not only do you have the 6,000 pound block, but now you have the road construction on top of it, holding it in place. Um, there is the, the vertical limit before you need tiebacks is 12 feet. So we can build 12 feet with this wall before we need to have tiebacks into the bank. The, the wall is, only needs to be constructed to nine feet. So we're well within that limit. So it can be a standing gravity in place retaining wall that looks nice. It's chiseled concrete. They have other, they have other um, designs, but uh, it would be special ordered, which adds cost. The chiseled, con uh, the chiseled granite is in stock, ready to go. Um, I'm trying to think if I left anything else out. So, go ahead. Joe. Um, the blocks will take a guardrail? They will, yes. The, the uh, design of the block, how it's like a honeycomb, mm -hmm. the inside of the block can um, hold a structure all the way to the ground. So if we start at, like say we start at zero and we build nine feet, the guardrail can be anchored all the way to zero with a column, whether it be stainless steel pipe, galvanized pipe, a concrete column, anything like that, we can go from uh, zero to nine feet or wherever the guardrail has to start. So it's anchored right through to the ground. Yay. So the guardrail isn't adhered, it isn't attached to the blocking. It's, a, it's driven all the way into the ground or attached mm -hmm. to the ground below the retaining wall. Then you just put the blocks over it? Yes. Yeah, okay. it's kind of incorporated while we build the, the blocks. Are these similar to what they used at the new car dealership? No. Because they have a block retaining wall there. I don't no, know that is it. completely different. Okay. Yeah. No, those are... And well, I liked what they did. So that, that I like what they did too, but it, it looks a little high for that type of blocking. Yeah. Cost-wise, is it more expensive? Uh -huh. It's a lot cheaper. So on the last page, I did a comparison... Okay, I didn't see that. Yep. Uh, so the pour-in-place concrete retaining wall we were looking at um, after the project was said and done was 140,000. Yeah. Um, and the, the the problem with that, well, I don't want to say the problem. the The struggles with that type of system is now we have to coordinate the concrete worker, the steel pilings being driven into the road, and and that all takes time, obviously. And the, they're all requiring a engineered blueprint de, uh, designed and, and drawn by an, an engineering firm. Now, all the concrete contractors are, are requiring that before they even pour concrete. So what, what that's doing to the project is it's adding time, it's adding cost when it's not necessary. Um, there... I can see why the concrete companies are requiring it because they don't want the responsibility of a failed wall. So I understand that and it's, it makes perfect sense. But for us, it just adds time and money to a project that I don't think is necessary. John? And just follow up on that. I remember watching the video mm -hmm. and the presentation and they said that they provide the engineering. They do. For your typical app or for your application so yes. you can supply them with the information what you're doing yes and they will do the engineering in fact um to add to that i i did a field trip to gilbert block and spoke to a salesman and he did offer to come do a site walk free of charge and actually design the wall for all the capstones all the end stones incorporated right in the cost of the blocks so it's it, um so that was very informative visit that I took to Gilbert Block and, and uh, it just kind of solidified the whole um, idea of, of going with this system. Pat? Do they have any uh, in place locally that they're using in, in and around the, uh, local roads? The closest project that they have was the airport in Rutland, Vermont. They have a 70 foot wall built at Rutland, Vermont uh, airport. Um, that's the closest project to us. How long has that been up? I, I, I don't know how long. All I, I do know that the Pennsylvania 
Virginia and Maryland have uh, DOT systems have 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 accepted this construction for their highways and, and, and roadways. Um, so kind of solidifies the idea that if a DOT system of that magnitude is accepting this as an as a building option, that there's some true there's some um, gravity to it. This one in Rutland, how high up? Seventy is feet. Seventy high. Seventy feet. 70 no, 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 seventy okay. feet high. I think it's three years old. I think. Is it? Oh, yeah. okay. My my aunt lives up in that area. Okay. So. Joe. What did the water company say when you told them about this? Um, I spoke to Scott Davis about this because of the the um, chiseled um, granite face because I, I wanted them to be aware of this being presented and and even if I was if they weren't gonna if, if they weren't gonna accept it or if they weren't on board with at least entertaining the idea then I wouldn't have come in and in, in the uh, approached you with it um, he liked the system he liked how it looked and he said that the um, that his board uh, would also like how it looks in in the, the plan in place so what I had done was I had actually gone a little bit further and because we're trying to work together with them they uh, I presented numbers on how much it would cost them to continue to wall the, the wall um, on their portion of it, the, the blocking, the drainage, the whole deal. And he was he was actually pretty happy about that because it is significantly less than, and the, the end product is gonna be something really nice that they can look at. Yeah. Um, so as far as I know, the water department is on board with the project or going forward with this design. The other plus to this is that we don't have to use the uh, steel pylons to hold the road back because we can remove a portion of the existing wall and build in place with the excavator. So we can build as we demolish um, without tying up the road any uh, for any length of time. It, and the upside to this is once I get all the, if, if the board agrees, once I get all the material on site at the DPW garage or property, I can haul enough blocks to the job site just to work, get the job done, work a day, and then the rest of the material is stored at the highway garage. So I don't have a big laydown yard at the job location tying up space for the water department or the, the Tilton prep school. Um, all the material can be hauled in-house with our trucks. The, there is one thing that we do have to do, and that's order a, um, rent a machine big enough to handle the blocks because they are 6,000 pound blocks, um, we would have to rent a 12,000 pound machine, which is $4,000 for a month, which gives us a month time frame to, to actually do this project. The upside to the size of the block is that we're laying eight feet at a time. And we're only doing, uh, the town is responsible for 89 feet. The part for the um, water department is I believe 53 feet. So it really doesn't take much time at all when you're laying eight feet at a time to get the project done. Um, I, I had priced out a month's time with the machine just for rain days, weather, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, unforeseen circumstances that, that are going to arise because it's going to happen. I mean, we're, it's, it, there's are no you pricing way. it to continue with the water company to do the water company as well and then bill them. No, this is just our cost. Okay, and then they're going to find a way to have it exactly. Done. How does it? Um, because the the DOTs that you mentioned that it was don't have the significant freeze thaw cycle mm -hmm. and salt usage that we do here mm -hmm. in New Hampshire. How does it hold up against that? Because well, I know concrete is not always a fan of exactly. salt. Exactly. So I I had asked the. Um, I'd reached out to the salesman at Gilbert Block, and he said that the the job site, the airport in Rutland, Vermont, um, be, because the it hasn't had any issues uh, with freeze thaws cycles. He said that the as long as we use three quarter inch stone in the construction in the honeycomb portion of the wall, 
where the drainage is good and when we use our fabric to stop the silt from collecting in the drain pipes. Um, there won't be any freeze thaws because the, the, the design of the wall evacuates all water and all moisture. Um, if there are freezes, it's more like a honeycomb or a slushy, just the residue on the stone that freezes and it's not like a solid block of ice. He said that they do run into issues if the drain pipe isn't maintained properly. So if you have a clog in the drain and you get that backup of water, now we're going to have issues. That's where the maintenance comes in hand, comes into play with the, the, the in the, the um, initial construction of the drains, obviously making sure that the, all the water is evacuated. Uh, the maintenance of the drain, mm -hmm. we have 89 feet. Mm -hmm. How are you going to delineate 89 feet if you add 53 feet on with the water company? Does that continue the drain? Or is there a way that you say, here's where we delineate and we can maintain 89 feet? Well, I, I would like to think that in the, that it'd be one drain pipe and that we would just share mm -hmm. the cost of maintaining the drain. Good with that. I just wanted to know how you were going to do that. Okay. No, it would be one drain. I don't, I wouldn't want to com uh, complicate things so by adding, flow, you'd it, have it would be one Connecting flow. ones all the exactly. way down to the. Yes. So just to go a little bit further, if this wall is constructed like this, the other side of the road will have the catch basins and the 12 inch drain, um, storm drain pipe. So the inboard side of the road will will basically handle all of the runoff from the hillside. So this wall isn't going to be handling all of that water. It's just going to handle the residue that comes down from the road. Um, the inboard side of the road, the Tilton prep side of the road will handle the majority of the water. That in um, conjunction with the way that we have the road tipped back towards the Tilton school so that it doesn't so the water runoff doesn't pile up over the retaining wall into the water department side. I think we'll be able to get the, the watershed where we want it, which is in the drain pipe and in downstream. Um, we have to get something for compaction. Back to you. Compaction? Yep, the um, vibratory roller. I mean, are you talking when we build the wall? Yeah, when you build the wall. The vib vibratory roll um, packer that we have is, is adequate. Um, I asked him about the compaction, and he said any handheld compactor would do, whether it be like um, the jackhammer style or the, the steel plate style that we use for compacting driveways. Anything like that is adequate. The vibration settles the rock, gets everything locked into place. Did you have something else? I wanted to say something. I do. I, well, I'm I'm in favor of it. However, I before we do this, I I think that we should enter into a an agreement with the water company, um, making sure that we do have an agreement that they'll help with the maintenance of the drainage and make sure because the reason being is that we may we may not be here you know 10 years from now and they may not be here from 10 years from now and we need to have an agreement in place for somebody to follow somebody through somebody to follow through on sure and i think that with the um Drainage, and there was one other thing that you mentioned that we would have an agreement. No, just the drainage. Just the drainage. Yeah. drainage. Yeah. yeah, I was going to ask for that, too. So. Yeah, the writ a written agreement mm -hmm. with them, and then I, I would be fine with the project. Oh, that's, yeah, that's just good business, making sure right. that everybody's... Exactly, it's only because we're not, we would not, and I think mm -hmm. Scott would agree with us. Um, he may not be mm -hmm. here five years or ten years from now. Or oh, sure. Whatever. So I'm I'm assuming there's a storm drain there already to connect the perimeter drain or the wall drains to. I haven't seen any drainage there. After that, it drains from that wall and what's behind. Just goes it. on the just goes on the, on the surface of the ground, right there at the water department property. I, I don't know how much flows out of there, but 
have to check into yeah you know, how they want to deal with that because we're taking water and putting is it putting the ice or from so it, the the, from the drainage that. from the wall will actually go downstream towards um prospect street it won't spill out onto their property it's going to be contained within the wall and then brought down towards prospect and that's our property it's yes. not going to be flowing yeah, it's actually going to be else. tied into the uh, catch basin that's at the end of that's what I was academy asking. oh okay yeah. yes it is going to be tied in there that is correct right next to the post office yeah, the, old the old post office, office. that is correct that's yeah. the one i plan on tying into and then the other way uh, on school street there is one so we're going to divide divide and conquer we're going to divide the the drainage one way and then the other yeah, there's one at the base of the bridge exactly yep covered yeah i make a motion to move forward with this system okay. so the um with the, the caveat that the uh, agreement be reached and signed sure. with the water department okay so the um yeah the motion on the floor oh okay sorry Rogel second the motion a second any other discussion exceed my time you said it looked like you wanted to say something i just wanted to um let you know that the order time from the time that i placed the order to receiving the product is about two weeks and that's just for delivery schedule because they have a stockpile of material already there. That's great. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, the motion was to proceed with the project yeah. and the caveat that the uh, uh, agreement be signed with the water commission for the drain. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed none. Motion carries. Thank you, Kevin. This is Thank great. you. Thank you. Super. Before you go, I forgot to uh, ask, call into town hall, but um, on the island, there's mm -hmm. a, like a sinkhole in the where the old oh. house used to be. Okay. It connects and nobody would fall in it. Okay. And then on the backside by the flagpole, somebody's been okay. eroding. Or eroding the... Yeah. Okay, so the guys are supposed to be there tomorrow mowing and taking and weed whacking, so I'll have them address those bring, issues. Yeah, and bring some dirt. Yep. Okay. He's just trying to get a head start on covering the roots later on. I so. got you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you, Kevin. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Let's see. All right. Next is uh, what time? Oh, we're right on schedule. Non-public. I make a motion to enter non-public session per RSA ninety-one A colon three, Roman numeral two, C. <laughs> Matters which, if discussed in public, would likely adversely affect the reputation of any person other than a member of this board, unless such person requests an open meeting. This exemption shall extend to include any application for assistance or tax abatement or waiver of a fee, fine, or other levy, if based on inability to pay or poverty of the applicant. We expect to be back into non-public session, I'm sorry, into public session at approximately 8 p.m. Do I have a second? Second. Constantino, second. Roll call vote. Constantino, yes. Jessamine, yes. Pyra, yes. Ruggles, yes. Scanlon, yes. We are in non-public session at 554. Do you want to have the non-public in here, or do you want to go into the conference room? Uh, I don't want to move the wall. Yeah, let's go in the conference This conference will now be recorded.
All right. Can you hear us now? Can you hear us now? Voice in the sky. Yes, yes. thank you. All right, look at that. That was pretty good. Are. All right, sorry. Go ahead, John. So I'll give you a brief synopsis. The uh, senior center um, has less than two inches of, and sometimes bare places of sheet metal ceiling, um, separating that from the outside air. And I volunteered to help out for insulating it. And I, I think we could save a lot of money on that. That's very brief. I add a lot to it myself. I hope you did. Um, great time Sunday concert series. It was looking like it might rain a little bit. We got a couple little drops that came in, hit us, but you know what? Nobody budged, not a single. I thought they were going to start packing up and leave. Nobody left. Um, a very, um, I guess, a little emotional introduction. Um, Titus and his daughter of, was that Victoria? Catherine. 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 Victoria's I'm Victoria. sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they got up and they talked um, a little bit about just, you know, it, it, it's been a, a real tough loss. Um, um, Pat got up, talked a little bit from, on behalf of the selectmen and that, thanking them. And, uh, on this series. Um, I thanked everybody for all their support and uh, how, you know, Jeannie had gotten through, pushed through and that everybody was, that the previous year, half of the attendees were sitting in Merrimack County and half were sitting in Belknap and now you're all sitting in Merrimack County. So, Bel and- Belknap <laughs> County. Or Belknap, yeah, yeah Belknap yeah. County, thanks. Yeah, yeah. so. And on, so it was a really good show, great attendance. Um, there's a, a bunch of gopher activity out there, um, which I brought up to Kevin and that will get fixed. The electric box made pride into that and took the timer, little buttons off, put that back together. Um, but we're off, good series, um, sold a lot of food. A couple things are a little concerning. Um, a lot of the sponsors have backed out, uh, including Franklin Savings Bank, from what I heard, has backed out, the town of Northfield, and a lot of individual sponsors, making it really tough to um, keep this going. I think we all have to take a look at that and see how we can nurture more people to contribute to keep this going. Okay, so... Um, that was Sunday. Tuesday, um, planning U-Haul came before the planning board, presented quite the uh, um, plans for the that piece of property, lar very large building. Um, they're going very thoroughly through it for what they need to do there. Uh, there's a lot of water issues. There's some wetlands are filling in and stuff like that. So they're working with everybody on it, um, creating some um, detention ponds out front. They're, they're still working on the design of that. They said they were going to be putting like a, a knee wall like around the parking lot, no suggestion brought to them. Um, and they did take note that we want them to focus on the appearance from the curb of the building because it's a warehouse type building and it could that's our gateway and they took notes and they're going to get back to the architect with the final plans on that. So that went really well. Um, they're going to be getting their um, um, response back from DES probably in about another month or so. Um, they're meeting next Monday with the Conservation Commission to get the uh, recommendations of them and comments from them that go to DES. So that's moving right along. Um, on Wednesday was Historical Association, um, well attended. Um, and now they're starting to have it at different houses and stuff too, to kind of everybody involved. Uh, this Saturday at, I gotta say 10 a.m., might be aware of, they're going to be presenting a plaque to the Lord Manufacturing Building. Does anybody know where that is? Akbar's, isn't it? Akbar's. 
tea hop oh, tea hop oh, was tea lord oh, manufacturing right. oh, and they're going to be presenting the brass plaque and a little information about it to them and uh you know they're tommy and everybody and and, and their dad's going to be there and yeah. um and they like anybody who can isn't busy to come down there um what time? 10 o'clock i have to confirm that this saturday yeah this saturday um so that's going on so that's that's real good um Lord manufacturing they did a bunch of stuff i think they were pharmacists and then they made spectacles um some other things so sorry 10 a.m um next thing that's going on from them is uh, Darina harbor and roy wakefield are getting their interviews i don't know if everybody's aware of it but um where they're doing interviews with different people around town um they've been around a long time and gathering the history and recording it and they're available on youtube and that so you know just some old timers spinning some yarns and telling us about what it was like a long time ago and their grandfather's town so that was um the uh historical society so that's um pretty much it busy week um and that's that's all i got thanks thank you john pat constantino it, to go along with what john was talking about about the um historical society uh while while during the meeting i got texted from john cerilio who would like to have the uh senior center for the august meeting and i said yes for August 10th at 6 p.m. That's when their next meeting is going to be um, at 6 p.m. Um, and they would like to invite all the seniors that go to the senior center as well. Um, that being said. <clears throat> Not a Wednesday? Get, no, they wanted Wednesday, but that's the music night, so they can't have Wednesday, but they can have Tuesday if they, that's a Tuesday, August 10th. I do have a couple of things. Um, I know we had talked in the past, and I can't remember who brought it up, but meetings at going back to the meetings at town hall because it was an intrusion on the police department here. So I don't know where we're at with that, um, what our thoughts are. We can bring it up at another time if we want. Not really Je sure. Jeannie just raised her hand okay. on that. So the reason that we have the meetings over here is because the technology is better if you watch the movies um at town hall you can't see faces here visually and au the audio is much better here um the funding that we're supposed to be getting from fema which tim reported in his report that funding is what we're going to use to upgrade the technology at town hall with the idea that once that happens if that's the board's wish we would move back to town hall sounds good um thank you Jeannie. it the other thing i wanted to bring up was the welcome to tilton sign it looks like we'll probably um someone needs to hay around it we have an agreement with lowe's and Coles uh, when they developed that property up there that they were to uh, maintain that uh, property around it genie all the way down to grant street um, so i think if we look back on the agreement i don't know where that would be but i think it would be in land use um, and I believe it's Lowe's. The people that do the landscaping for Lowe's uh, make a run down there when they do it and clean it up. So if I think it's just a real quick call to Lowe's, I think, John, right? Yeah, they, they had done it a couple times early this spring and then, and then all I, of a sudden it stopped. It stopped, yeah. So we need to probably just make a phone call because it's probably at least a foot and a half long now yeah and, and the, they don't have the plants by the sign out front and the timers not lighting it up anymore so it's kind of like you said it really looks terrible really i was terrible. gonna it myself but I... right. right that's all i have all right thank, thank you pat you. 
I Scott, forgot one thing. Oh, um, it came up. I uh, and would like to have the shrubs. I don't know if everybody's okay with that. That around the soldiers' monument, the use, you know, little U shrubs. Well, they're I think twelve feet tall, and they're big. They, yeah, they've they've overgrown. Civil War. Part. The Civil War. Yeah. 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 Um. So and because we're gonna be washing and waxing that, It'll probably be mostly me up there. Um, so I'd like to have those or permission to cut those. If that's anybody's the parks purview. purview. That's the parks purview. That's parks. I will um, Monday. They meet on Monday. Well, they 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 move their meeting from this past Monday to this Monday coming up. Yeah. Oh, convenient. Uh, very convenient. Yeah. So I'll drop you an email. I yes. Have a picture please. of what it looks like. Without. Can you can you copy Pat? on that because she's the ex officio alternate and I there's she doesn't know it yet but there's an outside chance I may not make it. Outside she knows now. She knows Sorry now. about that, but I, I forgot all about that. I'm glad I'm proud up. Thanks, John. The messenger. Scott Ruggles. Uh so one of my typical things uh, road work, road work, road work. Uh, they're they're it looks like they'll be done with school street tomorrow, I think, just from living there. Um, and but you've also got a couple of other projects going on that people should be aware of with 140 and then the work that's being done on Route 3. Um, update that also goes along with some historical society stuff. Um, work at Tilton School on the, in the front of the mansion. Um, there's been some concern because people were worried about how um, we that how some of the the landscaping was changed. Some of the um, earthen ramparts have been um, I'll use the term shaved down a little bit um, just so people know. Um, it was a necessity in terms of drainage that needed to be done to be able to shore up some of the, the property there um, and, and also to hopefully prevent erosion as we go forward with it. So um, they tried to preserve as much of the historical landscape as possible, but some of it was a necessity to have to, to change and take out. Um, and that's my gig for the week. All right. Thank you, Scott. Joe Jessen. Uh, short and sweet. I'll echo some of John's sentiments love the concerts and for those of you who haven't been please come on down this sunday because it's going to be really good and uh we we cleared a, a nice piece of money for and uh, donated it back to the concert series itself um and that was good uh john was talking about you know people stepping up and uh there's one person who stepped up significantly, and uh, that person is to remain anonymous, but I just want everybody to know that there are people in this town that uh, really go above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, perambulation. Uh, I've been saying perambulation for 10 years, huh, Pat? Yep. Yep. Uh, I've made contacts. I've got the contacts. Now finding the times where we can coordinate getting this done. I'm thinking it's after Labor Day. Uh, things slow down a little bit. Uh, and hopefully we can make times where we can get together to do this because we really need representatives from the, from the other towns. We don't have to do it all in one day, thank goodness. I mean, we can do Samerton one day and Franklin another day. Uh, and let me see one other thing, but I can't recall right offhand what it was. So pass. All right, Mr. Pyro forgot one thing. All right, Mr. Ruggles. R reminder to everyone that's NASCAR weekend. So traffic, oh, yeah. traffic, traffic goes up. They're only expecting thirty-six thousand people though. That's yeah, but they'll all come through exit twenty. Yes. All right, Pat. Just one reminder that. Um... Tim has several sign nows in there for financials in your emails. All right. All right. And I'm just going to throw it out there because everyone else forgot something. So fireworks for Saturday in August. That's all. Riverfront Park. What? I didn't change. I didn't change it. All right. Thank you. Town Administrator. What? I just All wanted right. to know if you wanted to give us an update on the uh, on our 
fire hydrants that we almost didn't have. Um, I can, is that okay if I just, yeah, the, the, uh, we have fire hydrants. Um, the, the decision was in favor of the fire district. So, what does that mean precisely? Yes, that came out today. So the, there was an injunction, um, but as of right now, but we, there'll be changes. We have to have a special meeting and all that. That was the court order to us. Fire hydrant, there is water. If there, God forbid, we need water, we can get it. Shut them off. Did shut them off. Oh, they did shut them off. All right. Town administrator's report. So you have one action item. This town clerk tax collector, and it has to do with the uh, retirement benefit. Um, really is up to the board whether you'd like to um, pay out that benefit or not. I, in your um, report from me, it gives you that amount, uh, what the value of those 20 days are. And it would most likely come out of the town clerk tax collector budget. So it's really up to you what you wanna do. Monthly pay it. Anyone else? I, I, no. No, as in. No, I don't. I don't feel like. Uh, you don't want to pay it. Okay. No, I'm just. All right. So is that a motion, Pat? Yeah, I'll make it as a motion. Um, Yes, I will make it a motion as, as we do allow and pay it. We've treated her as an employee for at least 12 of the 13 years I've been a selectman. So I think it goes beyond that. Is there a second? What's the dollar amount? Want to include that? It's on your uh, $6,208.54. 20 days of paid time off. which also affects the retirement, her retirement. Was there a second? Is there a second? I'll second it just to move us along. All right, oh, I was just about, okay. There's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in Yes, favor? yes, um, I'm just reading off this. NHMA advises that as an elected official, she is not entitled to the benefit. However, the board can make a decision to do that. Total cost to the town would be $6,208.54 for 20 days paid off, which would come out of the budget. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. 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 Motion fails. Uh, so you you will see information in the FYI. And I don't know if anyone has any questions for me on that one additional issue that came in at the last minute. I just wanted to update you. I did. Uh, follow up with the um, resident who had an issue with lighting at Planet Honda to make sure that um, the issue had been addressed and she responded back, yes, it has been addressed and um, so we're good there. So, Jeannie, just to let you know, I, I got an email and she thanked all of the town and everybody for um, being just so respondent to addressing that. He was very grateful. So, uh, just have a question. So, last night I came through town at about 1 a.m., which would be the light law. And there's a, another dealership just up the road, and they have their parking lights on. Should they not? Did you report on, it? I did not report it. I, but you should. Okay. 
So that I just I didn't know if there was any grandfathering in or anything like that. So I mean, it seemed like everyone else had their parking a lot of time, so I didn't know. So unless somebody you have to let them know. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Jeannie? Nope. Anybody else for that? All right. Where's my notes? Hold on. I haven't got there. There's nothing. There is no new business. Anything else before this board that needs to come before the board this evening? Motion to adjourn. Second. The time being 847. 13 minutes ahead of schedule. All those in favor say aye. Oh, aye. 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 Opposed? Have a nice night. Ahead of schedule. Look at that. Get out of that whole non-public pretty quick. <laughs>